I was in Portugal and I was checking the news because everyone was uh, talking about this. Everyone was afraid. And the last message was, bro, you will wake up, you will be shocked. Just... <laughs> Welcome back to the Keep Pushing Podcast. Today I'm joined by Ukrainian skateboarder Alexander Burchak. What's going on, man? How's it hello, going? Hello. Yeah, <laughs> Thanks for coming. It's nice. So just to give everyone uh, some context, I came and visited Ukraine in October 2022. And when I came over, I met you. You kind of showed me around. And that's where we yeah, ended up meeting. But I just kind of wanted to learn, like, what it was like growing up skating in Ukraine. You know, was was there a lot of skaters? Was it, you know, just a couple? Like, what was that like? Uh, you know, uh, uh, I'm skating uh, for already 13 years. And uh, I'm from the really small town uh, called uh, Energodar. It is the Parija region. Uh, we met with Chad uh, in uh, Odessa. It is uh, the the south part of Ukraine, uh, and uh, Odessa is a pretty big uh, city. And uh, there was a lot of skaters uh, back in the days, even twenty years ago. You know, uh, the skateboarding was was popular over there. And uh, when I started in two thousand eleven, uh, in my hometown, uh, there was like maybe ten skate eight skaters, but uh, uh the popular the population of uh, skateboarders uh uh going down oh, uh, a, and every next year i was uh the after i started skating because uh, uh, this is the kind of the town when uh when you get uh, 18 year old or something like that you finish school uh, you go and you going out you live in uh, the town and you go into the bigger cities uh, and uh, going to the university or moving just uh, looking for the best life for walking because uh, uh, there is a small town uh, near the nuclear power plant the biggest one in europe and uh, this town was built just for the workers of this uh, plant and there are no entertainment nothing like special just a uh, um, small quiet town and uh, there was a little skate park but it was, yeah. it was the worst skate park ever, I think, because <laughs> it was it was uh, metal and uh, on the worst asphalt ever. Because uh, when you when you fall down from the trick one time, you just your skin just going out. <laughs> it's like Full sandpaper. Blood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it, it that was crazy, you know, and uh, that was crazy to to learn tricks over there because. Uh, you always uh, scary to try something and fall and uh, hurt a lot. And uh, the the geometry of the obstacles of the ramps was like the fun box was like 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 this. And yeah, it's all off. that was that was that was fucking uh, dangerous to skate. But uh, you know when you learning tricks uh, uh, from the beginning on the worst skate park ever, so you can do tricks everywhere yeah were you generally by yourself like when you'd skate the park or were there a couple kids there like what was that uh, there was uh from uh, from the beginning uh i was a little boy and the uh, parents uh, didn't allow me to go to the skate park because it was like uh, 15 by walk 15 minutes by walk but uh kind of fire as uh, they, they, they were thinking that it is fire away from home so i was uh, just skating on the backyard of, of the apartment building that i was living at mm -hmm. uh so there was two guys uh, with, with me uh from the hood and uh, we just skate uh, trick flat ground tricks on asphalt on the yeah. worst asphalt ever <laughs> and uh and then uh time goes uh, and uh and uh, parents allowed me to go to the skate park, and uh, there was there I met uh, some older guys that already at, at that time I was uh, I was really shocked that uh, they really can do good tricks for 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 that time, but uh, after a year or two, they uh, uh, almost uh, all of them le left uh, the town, and uh, I was skating with uh, one or two 
boys uh, that uh, still uh, was living in my town. So, uh, yeah. and uh, the guys from uh, my childhood uh, that uh, uh, that uh, with whom I started skating, they already dropped. They already yeah. started do some other scene, uh, but I uh, continued. Uh, and uh, there was uh, some time <clears throat> that I was I was be I was be able already to go to another cities uh, to like small skate tour for the for the contest or just for skating. And I know more people. And uh, there was a time that uh, Instagram began, and uh, I just I just uh, I just asked my parents uh, to buy me a GoPro camera. Uh, that was that was uh, the the biggest the best decision uh, you know I was happy as fuck and uh, I started filming some tricks with some uh, people and uh, then uh, my level uh, a little bit up and up and up and uh, and I think uh, there was a time uh, that every skater uh, left the city uh, really? just, uh, and uh, I stayed uh, by my own. I was I started skating uh, with BMX uh, riders, uh, some roller blade, bladers, uh, yeah. anyone. Whoever had any, wheels, just, basically. Just anyone, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and uh, and I started uh, getting good tricks, and uh, some people from other cities uh, started uh, know me more, and uh, there was such a time uh, that uh, I finish. I was finishing school. And uh, some people from even from the capital, from Kiev, where I live now, uh, some good skaters, some legends uh, from Ukraine uh, have already know me. And uh, I finished school. I uh, at, uh, I sent my documents to the university, and I uh, came to Kiev. Uh, and uh, I have already know a lot of. All of them, because I was uh, going to another cities for contest or skate tour, skate tours, uh, yeah, and it's uh, probably a tight community, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Back in the days when I just uh, came to Kiev, uh, there was uh, like uh, the golden uh, days of skate, golden golden time of skateboarding in Ukraine. You know, like a lot of skaters, every sport full of skaters, every time, every day, every day, really? a lot of good tricks. Yeah. A lot Why of do you sport. think? Why do you contest. think that time was was so, um, you know, like everyone was so into it? I think there was, uh, uh, but by the way, like the, the war first... the, the war already was going in our land. You know, the the war started in two thousand and fourteen on uh, mm. the eastern part of Ukraine in, in Donbas, uh, but uh, and I. Uh, I uh, moved uh, to Kyiv in 2017 and uh, I don't know why but uh, mm, there was like the bloom of skateboarding you know a lot of people from different uh, cities uh, was living in Kyiv uh, and there was really a nice time and uh, I I met uh, I met everyone uh, like the, all the legends uh, all the guys uh, uh, with the brands and everything and I was uh, trying to get as much connections as I can and uh, yeah. I tried to skate with everyone a little bit a little bit and after uh, after half of a year I got two sponsors uh, uh, and I was really shocked because uh, I, I was trying to skate, you know, like uh, there was like uh, the second breeze uh, of my skate career when I moved uh, to Kiev because uh, there was like a lot of good uh, energy, a lot of motivation yeah. to skate. And I was trying to do my best all the time, all, all, every sport, every every contest, everything uh, was, uh, I was uh, 100 person in. And uh, so, so what did your people, parents think? of this oh. as you're like getting better and you're starting to like graduate and stuff uh, like what were they kind of how were they feeling you, about it you know uh, uh my father at, at the time i, w I was moving uh, to kiev my father didn't understand still didn't understand what what skateboarding meant to me because uh, at the time i was already skating seven years but uh, his words uh, was uh, uh Yo, maybe you will not uh, take uh, skateboard. Uh, you go into study, and I was like, 
bro, I'm going to skate. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to study. But you know, uh, I graduated, uh, I got master's degree and bachelor's degree in the economic studies. So I, I, yeah. I, I could do both. And uh, I study a lot and I study really good. And I'm trying to do my best because my parents, my mom uh, paid for this. And uh, thanks for sent her for this. And uh, yeah. I graduated and I got uh, two diplomas in uh, economic studies. So, uh, but I skate all the time. You know, I, 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 know, I know about my universities that I am going to because uh, there is uh, some kind of university you can go and uh, ask uh, teachers uh, what should I do and uh, just do uh, in advance everything. Uh, and then you have a lot of free time to skate. So yeah, I just right. used uh, to yeah. do it uh, and uh, skate as much as I could. That's awesome. Yeah. So when you were um, growing up, was it tough to get product in Ukraine? Like, was there a lot of shops no, or shoes, that, boards, uh, like stuff like the, that? Back in the back in the days, there was uh, even better than now because. Uh, when I just started to skate, uh, there was uh, the skate shop, uh, a lot of skate shop, but one brand, uh, there was like stuff skate shop and there was 24 offline shops all over Ukraine. Now there is zero of, really? it, of this of this brand. Yeah, yeah, because time's uh, killing the industry. But uh, for now, it's it's more it's more online stuff, you know, what, but, but uh, I'm skating for Papa Power skateboarding, and uh, mm -hmm. we just we just don't have offline skate shop, but we have uh, we are doing uh, all the all the shipping, all the delivers, uh, all the buying and selling uh, by online. You know, uh, yeah. just uh, just uh, doing uh, Instagram, and uh, everyone know how to how to buy stuff. And for now, what? we are lucky. Uh, we built uh, Maxim Pavlenka. It is uh, an owner of uh, the brand Papa Power skateboarding. He built uh, uh, with uh, with the crew. He built the skate park, the indoor one. So we have there some uh, rooms uh, for the staff, so yeah. people can just uh, come to the skate park, skate. If someone breaks the board, you can buy the board, and it is perfect. Yeah, no, it's um. Yeah, that's in it's interesting to think about that. Like, why are there no shop? Is it because it's so expensive to get stuff like shipped over? You know, it just doesn't make sense. Like, it's just easier to have it online. Uh, just you know, uh, you're, like, you're talking about offline uh, shop. Yeah, like is like why aren't there any shops at all? Is it like uh, just too expensive now, there, there to is, get? There is some. There is some. Uh, uh, there is uh, in Kiev. Uh, we have only one but it is it is not uh, only skateboarding it is like uh, snowboarding skiing and skateboarding but uh, they have good uh, uh, good uh, good skate stuff but you know okay. this is really expensive uh, um, for for the people who who own the shops you know they there are not 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 so many skateboarders for now in ukraine that can uh, uh, come and buy, come and buy products, come and buy products. Uh, it is very expensive uh, to pay the rent and everything, pay the salaries uh, for for the workers. Uh, back in the days, it was really better. Uh, I told you, like twenty four, uh, even even maybe it's it's only one brand of skate shops, twenty four skate shops. Uh, there was like different uh, of them, and. Uh, Back in the days, there were uh, much more skaters, and uh, the currency exchange was was different. You know, back in the days, uh, it was okay to buy skateboard uh, for the salary you have. Uh, you can uh, you can buy more than now because uh, currency exchange every every four years every, with every president it's up up and up and up and up. Uh, really? yeah. And because of the war for now, it's, it's high. Uh, it's really high. It's, uh, you know, you can buy, uh, two or three pairs of shoes for your month's salary. Okay. Damn. It's not, oh. it's not okay. Or like, I don't know, maybe, uh, you can buy, uh, the board and everything you need uh, for skating, uh, but, uh, you, 
you will not have any other money to buy rent for apartment or to buy uh, to buy uh, food as much as you need it is really crazy the currency exchange almost doubled uh, with the war for now and so, uh, a lot of skaters uh, just finished skating or moved uh, to to other countries so for now running business uh, in skateboarding industry it is really hard yeah no it sounds so are you talking about online it's that expensive too or just just in no, person online it's online it's uh, it's easier for people because we have uh, the best delivery service uh, it is called uh, nova post uh, okay. it is uh, you can uh, you can just uh, uh, send uh, the product and mm -hmm. next day it could be in any in any uh, city of ukraine and it costs okay. uh, two, two bucks and the it um is, it is the, fastest the shoes are like normal price in america like just this regular it's, it's a little bit uh, more expensive because uh, uh, we don't have distribution any brand yeah. you know right. it is crazy because uh, we have nike but uh, it is uh, not the night distribution. We have night shops, but uh, they just uh, buying uh, somewhere the shoes and uh, selling them. Right. Uh, the price doubled or something like that. And uh, it is uh, even more expensive than uh, in, in America. And you can't uh, almost find uh, the skateboard shoes, you know, only some sneaker, uh, sneakers fashion uh, shops that uh, sell Nike SB, but it is uh, you know the GT Nike SB uh, Grand Taylor. Uh, it, it could be like uh, one hundred and twenty bucks instead of eighty. Yeah, yeah. That's I feel crazy. like it's um when it's in the shops and it's all over the city. Like you were saying, there was a bunch of shops. I feel like it's easier for kids to kind of be with their parents and kind of start like they see something there. You know what I mean? It's like if it's just this dream of like. You know, I'm gonna order shoes online or something. I feel like it's almost harder to, to get into it. For now, no. I think uh, yeah. all of the all of the kids in Ukraine, uh, uh, all the skate kids and everything, they they use online more than more than any time of of yeah. the industry. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, but I guess I'm they, old. Yeah. They, they, they can they can find everything. I, I'm feeling I'm 24, but I'm feeling old because. Uh, they can they just show me like uh, some tc shoes they've seen uh, in ukraine it cost uh, they cost like 100 year, 100 bucks and uh, they they just show me oh yo in poland uh, just 50 and i was like where you find it <laughs> yeah. you, know, you can always where, expect where can, where kids, can but, yeah. order them <laughs> they, they know yeah. everything bro i can I can't imagine. I can't imagine. You know, back in the days when I was a kid, I was just uh, going to school, go uh, come back, eat food, and go skating till night. They are just uh, looking in their phones every time and uh, doing TikTok and everything. I don't know. I don't, yeah. I can't understand this. I mean, I was the same way. I would skate for like ten hours a day. You know, I'd wake yeah. up and just all day, just that's it, all day long. Um, it's kind of interesting because like you probably had less of a shot to make a living off of skateboarding or get popular when we were doing it, just skating 10 hours a day without a phone. So the yeah. phone kind of, it helps you, but you're also like use it all the time. You kind of get sucked into it, you know, and you don't skate as much. So it's like a weird kind of balance. Mm, but you know, uh, uh, making a living of skateboarding uh, in any way in Ukraine, it's, it's kind of impossible because, uh, uh, yeah, or the only way you have some brand, uh, maybe, but uh, I saw a lot of brands that just finished the clothes because uh, there was no customers and everything. Because the the pricing, uh, the the popularity of skaters in Ukraine, uh, you know, it is uh, really pity that uh, almost uh, I don't know, almost ninety percent of Ukrainian skaters just don't have money to buy uh, new stuff skateboarding like in daily base not 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 daily but on the basis yeah uh, it is really it is really pity because uh, you if, even if you want to make a brand you just uh, got stuck with a lot of products uh, in your house and you can't just uh, sell it uh, uh, constantly you just can yeah. sell one board and then one week later two boards and everything 
But back in the days, that was uh, really good times. Uh, no, I mean, like yeah. my my sponsor Maxim Power Power Skateboarding. Uh, he was uh, selling uh, three hundred boards a month, bro. Really? That was uh, that was golden times. That uh, they uh, we we were we were selling a lot of a lot of boards all the time, and we uh, ordering uh, like. 500 boards, 600 boards, and sold out, and sold out. Uh, and you know, by the way, uh, your podcast uh, name keep pushing. And uh, yeah. the first on the first uh, board of Papa Power, uh, we had a uh, design never stop pushing. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. I, I don't have <laughs> oh, it yeah. uh, at me, but uh, yeah. but yeah, there was uh, awesome. the message that I remember till the end of my skate career: just never stop pushing. That's incredible. Um, with, so you, I'm like fascinated by you. Like, I never really thought about it that like you almost can't, it's very hard to make a living off of skating. You know what I mean? It's almost like you're doing it. And it's like, you know, like say when I started, you have something you're envisioning, you know what I mean? Like, Oh, I'm going to get on this company. I'm going to be, you know, it's at least possible, but you're saying like there, at least there's not many companies that could even put yeah, you on. Like it has to be through online or like maybe a non-skate company you have or... to do everything bro you have to do just everything uh, that life's uh, gi- that every chance that uh, life gives to you just you need to catch everything 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 just i don't know uh back in the days there was a lot of like uh commercials uh that need skateboarders uh, on on a basis you know like some advertising yeah. advertising some promo uh, promo video everything just not related with skate you know like some uh uh some energy drink or some sneak, snacks uh just here in the skaters and you doing some uh some acting for them and uh getting some money i don't know for now yeah. um i'm trying to do my skate school and i'm uh teaching people uh, how to skate i i'm doing the private courses uh, of it and uh i think uh in the in the in the season in the warm season it's it's kind of good money uh, if you yeah. have uh, one or two lessons uh, a day you can uh, you can earn uh, 700 bucks a month it's, it's yeah a, no, it's it's, it, for, for ukraine it's it's a good money and yeah, you can make uh, pretty good money um doing skate lessons so wait yeah, you kinda. um so you that skate park that you're doing the lessons at you guys fundraised to get that park built right uh, we we just started uh, doing it uh, by our own money, uh, and uh, there was a lot of time to to, to do everything because we started doing it uh, at the beginning of the winter, and the winter in Ukraine is it's hard, bro. It's, I'm sure it's brutal. And there yeah. was How no cold does it get? Uh, huh? How cold does it get? Uh, it could be minus twenty degrees. And for how many uh, months? Uh, three, four. But for now, it's like it's around zero degrees. Uh, but uh, imagine just starting building the skate park at minus five degrees every day. You know, yeah. we need uh, Maxim and uh, the crew. They needed uh, to smooth the ground because there was fucked ground, uh, and uh, he was just uh, with the stuff like uh, to. I don't know mm, how to yeah, explain. Yeah, like sanding it down or smoothing it out. And... Yeah, 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 yeah. To make the ground smooth by his own hands uh, in the winter, in the in the cold. Yeah, and yeah. just uh, starting uh, buying some material, some wood materials, starting some, uh, to create in, in his in his head first on the computer, and then uh, starting building some stuff a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. Then they ran out of money. They uh, just uh, started to do fundraising by uh, Ukrainian uh, people, but uh, and he and he gets some money, some uh, money for some more wood and everything. But it is uh, it was like ten percent uh, of of they needed soon, and uh, that was crazy. Uh, and uh, but you know everyone already wants the skate park, everyone yeah. needed. Even if not, uh, uh, he started doing it uh, a year ago, like uh, a month after we met in Odessa. 
and uh, they were building it like eight months or something like that for a lot a lot a lot of time because uh, we had no money and uh and one day i just uh, realized that uh, i need to to do some uh, some post on instagram and uh, i just write in english uh, the post and name it uh, the message to world skate community and uh, they and, and this post reached a lot of skaters and uh, good activity and uh, everyone reposting 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 and uh, there was like almost worldwide and uh, people from from all over the world uh, sending money uh, and uh, then and you know like uh, the post not leaving uh, the post not leaving uh, for a long time e- even if it is uh, pound raising but uh, this one was living uh, like everyone was uh, acting with it uh, for almost a month and uh, i think we gathered uh, two thousand dollars something like that yeah and uh, and i i was thinking it is it is over it's it's a good money it's over it's it, it's died already and i was like okay but uh, one day i just i just uh, get them the, the message in instagram in dm from from some uh surfer from france from bordeaux like paul and i was like and the message was uh about everything about nothing i was like mm, okay maybe i answer okay and uh he he didn't understand me what what he is what he wants with, uh, from me and i was like okay uh i just asked him what do you want bro and he, <laughs> he 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 told me let's let's uh let's make a video chat and i was like okay and uh it turned out uh, with a conversation with him and uh, the owner of uh, darwin skate camp it's darwin camp it's a big camp uh, with the skate park with art, art galleries with musician uh, stuff in in bordeaux in france and uh, we we did uh, we did couple uh, we did couple uh, video chats and uh, we it turned out uh, that they send us uh, 1500 euro wow. and uh, that was crazy we 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 was not believing that that was really <laughs> crazy that some people from france just find this post after a month or, or two months uh and uh, they just send us money and we were that's like a, wow that's and incredible then, yeah it's the beauty of the internet right you could just live yeah, there forever and someone could just crazy yeah. yeah and then bro then um they uh they they wanted to come for the opening because there was like the times that almost almost everything done uh, this money it's almost uh, enough uh, to get all the all the materials and uh, the building process already my maybe almost finishing and mm-hmm. they uh, told us that they want to come and uh, bring uh, more money and some uh, skateboards uh, for the skate school and we were like no way i like they, they they told us like in two weeks we will be in Kiev and I was like I'm not, I I don't believe but two uh, uh, then two guys uh, the owner of this camp uh, like fifty year old uh, uh, guy uh, Felipe and uh, some guy with the camera just came to Kiev uh, and uh, bring uh, in the backpack big big one uh, ten skateboards like for the skate school and bring 2000 euro by cash bro that's incredible wow yeah, that's that's a crazy story and we was we were like wow no way how it works the universe really helps when you uh do like when you <clears throat> making a lot of effort in any okay. niche if you oh, do okay, a lot it. of e- e- effort really the the universe uh, giving you everything you need it's true. I've seen it happen. Yeah, especially you're doing something good, putting in a lot of work and trying to help people. Like people are pretty willing to give and support, you know. That's incredible. So was that your is that the only skate park indoors or uh, uh not, not not really. Uh in Kiev uh, 
even uh, like five years ago and uh, till 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 now, uh, there was a small indoor skate park like underground. It is it was like a little room. I don't really? know, like like a shelter, and it was uh, really tiny, small space, uh, a lot of people inside, uh, and then uh, the this place started uh, attending scooters. It was mm-hmm. really bad, bad, yeah. bad story. And uh, they and every winter they started to uh, up price for no reason. Okay. And uh, we were like, no, 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 we we will not go over there. No, 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 no. And uh, uh, Maxim uh, always wanted uh, to to build a skate park, his own one indoor. That was his dream of life. And uh, yeah. he started doing it in the middle of the war uh, with no money and anything. With uh, in in the worst place ever. I don't know what was in his head, <laughs> but he but he did it. I yeah. all all the time, every day. I am attending this place. I was I'm thinking that it is it is it is incredible. It is just unbelievable. But it is it is already here. Yeah. Now I give you guys props because that's like a uh, building a skate park alone is one of the hardest things to do and to make it work. And then like in the conditions and raising the money and the, all that stuff, you guys are fighting. So like, thanks for stepping up and doing that. Cause the kids need it. Like, you know what I mean? So everyone, everyone need, need it. Cause really in the winter uh, in Ukraine, uh, especially in wartime, it's really hard, bro. Yeah. It's uh, almost uh Oh, every time uh, depression and everything, uh, you your mood is upset. Uh, you thinking where to get money for living and everything. Cause uh, the only the only way uh, to get money in winter uh, is just go for a job and uh, do it like five five two every day. Uh, yeah, yeah, and and uh, you earn not so much money that you can uh, live and be happy. Just. For for the living, it's it's crazy. I don't want to go to to, to work. You know, like I'm trying yeah. to do everything, but not going uh, to work because uh, it is uh, it is the way. Uh, just it is next step to leave the skateboarding. Yeah, for sure. It's tough. It's a tough balance, man. I'm still trying to figure it out myself. Even here in the U.S., you know, it's uh, it's interesting. You said the seasonal depression. You know, it's definitely a real thing. And I'm in New York, like. It gets cold, but it's like in the twenties. You nothing crazy, thirties. You know, for three months or so. You know, but I imagine over there, it's like it's brutal. Yeah, it's it's, it's yeah. pretty it's pretty hard. Yeah, really. Yeah, and uh, um, you know, it's it's really hard as well uh, when you because in winter there was there is a uh, a little bit uh, more often uh, the missile uh, attack. To Kiev, yeah, and you, when you waking up of explosions, and your day starting at five a.m. when you go into the, going as much uh, as far as you can uh, out of window, because it That's... is uh, it is uh, really dangerous. Because uh, uh, in the in the most uh, uh, most often. Uh, you can uh, die not from the missile, just from the, win- the just from the window, the the part of the window that go in uh, from the explosion. Oh, really? Yeah. Like the pieces of of the yeah, yeah, of the glass. Wow. So, Wait. So I wanted I wanted to get into this. So I want to start like at the beginning of when, like the war. Like, did you know this was coming? the war like did you kind of was like that kind of like impending like you felt it coming or was it kind of out of nowhere you know i'm i'm clarify a little bit uh to, for you guys uh, and uh, for you chad uh the war started uh, in 2014 uh okay. in the eastern part of ukraine but it was like a small conflict uh, everyone in uh, the most part of ukraine thinking that was thinking that it is a small conflict but it was uh, the beginning of uh, bigger stuff. And uh, my, fr- my friend uh, I'm living with, uh, my roommate, uh, he's from Donbass, he's from Donetsk. And for him, uh, the war started 10 years ago and he felt uh, 
uh, this feeling, not just two years ago uh, when the full scale yeah. invasion uh, started in uh, in the bigger part of Ukraine. He he felt everything uh, back in the days when he was young, and uh, for now we are living in so hard times. But uh, you know, before the full scale invasion that was uh, started. Uh, 24 February 2021, mm-hmm. yes, uh, or 2022. I'm not sure. You probably know better than me. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, it doesn't matter. Okay, Either okay, one of okay. those. Two yeah. years ago. Okay, it, it started two years ago. And uh, before this, uh, I was uh, I was escaping uh, the, the winter. And uh, I was uh, in a long trip to Europe. I was... Uh, in the 85 days in Europe, in Portugal, uh, and I was like skating every day. I was I was living my best life, and uh, I bought the tickets uh, on 21st of February. The war started 24, uh, okay. back to Ukraine, and uh, the week before uh, my uh, departure, I was already checking the news every day. I was in Portugal and I was checking the news because everyone was uh, talking about this. Everyone talking that something will happen, something will happen, and every every scene, everyone was afraid. But uh, I make a decision. I made a decision uh, to go on a flight, and uh, I I uh, came back to Ukraine on twenty twenty second of uh, of February. And uh, in two days, the full scale invasion began. I was, uh, that was, that was the, the craziest time. It's, it's like, yeah, what was uh, that, it, what was it's that like, like? The most, like day one, right, arriving it's, back? It's like the most uh, horrible uh, movie about the war, but it was the reality. Uh, it's like, I was sleeping. I I, I woke I woke up late, bro. The war started five a.m. I uh, woke up eleven a.m. <laughs> and I I just turned on my phone and I was uh, seeing like more than one hundred messages from everyone, from just everyone on everyone I know. And the last message was, bro, you will wake up, you will be shocked. <laughs> and I was cause. Uh, I saw the news and uh, I I started hearing the explosions, right, right, uh, not not far away. Just poof, 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 poof. everything was uh, like um, I don't. I was I was thinking that I'm sleeping. I'm just I'm just still sleeping. No no way no way. And uh, I uh, f- first thing I just uh, open uh, the the link and I uh, checked the bomb shelter. Where is the nearest one? And I was like, uh, I was uh, in my university hostel at the time because I was still uh, studying. Uh, and uh, my uh, and the nearest uh, bomb shelter was under the building. And uh, I was like, okay, now I can uh, I can think uh, what should I do next. But there was, I don't know how to explain. It was crazy, you know. You go first time I I went. Uh, I I I answer all the questions. Uh, I check the information. I I already uh, knew that uh, the uh, Russian army going really close uh, to Kiev already. They are already almost in Kiev, where the where I was, where all my friends uh, was at the time. And uh, in any way, I just go out to to the shop because I I need something to to buy some food and everything. And uh, in in the street there was like apocalypse, you know, like there was like the end of the world. All the people running all, all the directions, uh, everyone with the, uh, with bags with the, with everything, all the all the roads with the traffic, uh, and uh, in the air. Uh, there was like sire- missile siren all the time, like ooh, ooh, like dangerous, dangerous. Really? D- don't go out. J- dangerous, dangerous. Uh, everything, everywhere. And uh, yeah, I, I, I was going to the shop, and uh, just uh, I needed uh, to stay in the line to enter the shop, like half an hour. 
with uh, with uh, everything going uh, crazy around me, you know, and everyone talking about the war, everyone talking about leave leave the country, leave the city. The, but you know, there was like traffic jam leaving the city, the road. The traffic jam was uh, twenty kilometers, like the cars. Four wow. four different uh, uh, lines, one mm-hmm. way, straight twenty kilometers. And did you think of leaving, or were you at this first point day, like you had to get out I, of the country? Yeah, uh, you know, like first day was was crazy. I was just uh, I I bought some food, uh, something for two days, for three days uh, in in advance, and uh, I was just sitting with my phone and checking the news all the time because uh, every second there was a new something new, something new information, some new information uh, about how how bad the situation. And you and I was like, just, just obsessed. I was like, I don't know. My my head was somewhere else. I was yeah. just uh, trying to figure out what should I do, and uh, I, I I decided to stay uh, the place I am, because it it was dangerous to even to uh, to move somewhere. Because uh, the next day, the second day, the Ar- Russian army was already around. Around Kiev, you know, you could you could uh, just uh, go off Kiev uh, by by car, and you could be sh- shot 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 Damn. by by missile, by uh, guns, and everything. You could you could be killed, just killed, cause uh, just they they were everywhere. There was like tens of uh, thousands of them around Kiev. You know, that was really yeah. crazy. And uh, every time, all the time, you hear in the explosions. You just, uh, I was living in the bomb shelter uh, under the ground for 10 days. I was going out like one time, one once uh, in three days to buy some food. And I was uh, in the bomb shelter. And uh, the, the craziest part that uh, there was uh, a lot of people inside this building, but every day, some of them live somewhere, trying to leave the city, trying to go to the tra- train station, everyone. And uh, from the... Uh, beginning there was like 50 people and then like 20 15 less less and you're thinking oh what's next what's next what should uh, we do that's got to be weird too because you're seeing people leave and you're probably like well should i get out of here too like yeah i mean it is really scary stuff you know and everyone uh, who 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 was uh continue staying there Everyone like, oh, something bad, something bad will happen soon. Uh, and the, the Russian army is, I was, I, I was living in the suburbs and uh, like 10 kilometers uh, from uh, my building, there was already, everything was destroyed. It was just, uh, there is uh, like the, you can just uh, check in the internet, uh, two cities, uh, two small cities, Bucha and Irpeng. That mm-hmm. was, uh, that is really close to Kiev, like five kilometers. Uh, there is, there, there was uh, destroyed every building, every apartment building, like 10, uh, 10, uh, um, stories. No, no, no. no 10, ten, uh, yeah, like, 10 stories high, right? Yeah. 10, ten stories high. Yeah. Uh, every, everything destroyed, everything, every car in the street burned out just. I don't know. The the are pictures speaking, uh, the pictures you, of sorry. this uh, was was as horrible as as you see in the in the in the in the worst uh, movie in war about war. Yeah. And well, that this was is to, and yeah, and it is it was happening uh, now, back in the days, yeah. but in the moment. And I was thinking uh, to leave uh, somewhere, but uh, I saw the 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 videos and photos about leaving the uh, the city from by train, that that was crazy, bro. That was like thousands of people trying to get in one train and then fighting uh, to for, for the excess. And I was like, yeah. no, 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 I don't wanna, I don't wanna do this. So uh, uh, I called my uh, my friend and sponsor Maxim Pavlenko, Papa Power skateboarding owner. Uh, mm-hmm. by phone and uh, he was living on the <laughs> left shore of uh, Kiev, uh, like from the other side of the river. And there, there was a much more quiet place 
uh, to stay. So uh, I I told him, I, I, can I just come to you for leave some 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 time? Cause uh, at my at my area it is uh, getting more and more dangerous. And she was like, yeah, okay, no worry. Uh, just uh, pack your bag and uh, come anytime. But that was really challenge. Cause uh, I was trying yeah. to order taxi, and you know, like going uh, by bridge was uh, there was like in the city was a block post with the army, our army, and uh, you need to uh, check in all, all the time, show passport, and they uh, asking where to, where you going, cause no one in the street, everyone at home, everyone uh, escaped from the war, and you want to go from the for uh, i was uh, i was going from one uh, from one uh, uh, side of kiev to another one it was uh, almost almost impossible i was i was trying to order a taxi for 3 hours and no was one, there not no like one no one wanted i was going to say no one probably wanted to drive at work no no no, no. Oh, yeah. that was putting the uh, put uh, the price five times bigger than it is uh, uh, ordinary yeah. in the in the in the ordinary life, right. and uh, three hours later, some taxist, uh, some driver uh, came for me, and I was lucky to get to Maxim. Uh, that was really crazy. That because uh, you going uh, from uh, through the city, that is uh, a lot of buildings destroyed, a lot of cars burned just uh, on the street, like. It was uh, really horrible, uh, horrible moments, uh, and that was. Uh, but that was the the best decision ever, cause uh, I stayed already. Uh, from that time, I went to Maxim. I stayed uh, for three months with him, and that was a really nice uh, time, cause uh, you were together with your friend, with your like older brother, like, mm -hmm. and uh, you you just uh, can talk to him uh, at yeah. least, cause I was yeah. alone. I was going through that people, alone. I don't know. I, yeah, that's was, way way harder. You got someone yeah, to bounce it, things off of, yeah, or yeah. kind of like. And the, and the most uh, terrible stuff uh, was uh, on the seventh day of the full invasion. I was uh, still in the university hostel. My parents called me, and uh, the uh, my from my native uh, town, Energodar, and they told that. Uh, Russian army going to occupy them now, and they were the Russian army was uh, uh, fighting with the guns and with the tank and everything uh, to capture a nuclear power plant. Bro, it it could be. Did you hear something about Chernobyl? Yeah. It's it's uh, it could be if they hit it, uh, the the nuclear power plant, uh, bad, like well that's uh, basically it, right because it it's already time. ice cold there. So if they hit the nuclear power plant, then yeah, it could that's be, a cold cold it winter. Be, uh, it could be right? ten times uh, better, or ten ten times worse uh, than Chernobyl. It could be, you know, uh, if uh, if if they uh, bombed uh, the nuclear power plant. Uh, no, there there would be no people oh, living, the, uh, in Europe, in all Europe. Oh, okay, everyone, so if they hit that, the explosion would have, no, would have been so the big. Explosion, the radiation, the radiation of the nuclear. Yeah. Uh, it could be as as bad for them and for everyone. It, it, I was going to say, aren't they close enough that it would affect them too? But uh, the... And I was I was really crazy. I uh, at the time because I was calling my parents, and uh, once the connection lost for three days, I I didn't know what happened in there. But uh, it that was uh, almost two years ago, and uh, yeah. my parents still occupy in occupation by Russian army over there. Really? And Russian army and still where, where is there. that in, in... Energodar? Uh, okay. It's the Zaporizhia region. So they stayed uh, the whole time. Yeah, they they're still over there, and uh, I have no phone connection. I have only I can call them by Telegram or by internet, some some kind of applications, and they're over there because uh, my mother uh, th they could uh, leave uh, 
this is a city, but uh, my mother doing some charity project, some uh, um, dog shelter. Uh, she's uh, healing them. He, she's uh, treat them. So she she just doesn't want to 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 let them. A charity for uh, yeah. She yeah. runs a dog shelter. Yeah, that's incredible. Yeah, for for already eight years. So the, this is uh, her mission, you know. Wow! Props to her. That's incredible. Damn. So, um. All right, so I'm gonna. When I came over, the first thing I noticed was, you know, you told me about this app that basically notifies you when there's like uh, airstrikes or something going on in the air, right? Mm -hmm. or... The the name of this uh, the, the name <clears throat> of this uh, application is uh, like missile alert uh, application. It is uh, the application uh, that uh, telling you. Uh, when it's uh, dangerous uh, to to be outside, because uh, maybe a uh, Russian uh, plane with uh, bombs, with missiles, uh, taking off the land and uh, flying around, and it could uh, uh, attack or no, not attack. It could it could just uh, uh, pass make, by. Uh, no, yeah, pass by or just uh, do fake uh, fake flight for to scare the people or anything, mm -hmm. and you you don't know at any time it uh, it it could be really dangerous or it could be just uh, fake. It yeah, could well, be, it could be drone attack. Uh, well, a lot of well, like got... big drones, less just uh, they call them uh, kamikaze. They just a, a big drone that flies and uh, drops uh, uh, to the land with a lot of uh, explosion. That's wild. It, yeah, when, it, when it, I was there and you showed me that, I was like, you know, and it went off while we were walking and talking and you just like showed it to me. Like we just kept going about the day and I was just like, you know, for me, that was like my first day there. But you had been through all this stuff. So it's crazy to think like. You just open in your phone, like, oh yeah, like, no, yeah, don't worry about it. Like, it's yeah, like the adjustment of like you guys got so used to it, and you'd still yeah, go about the, your day and, and, and really like crazy. go to work, you know. Uh, that's really a bad stuff because uh, that we used to it because uh, it's uh, the the signal that uh, it is dangerous. It is. Uh, mm -hmm. It, you could you could die, you can die now and uh, no right. one cares about that's but really crazy at the same time it's like how long are you just gonna sit underground and not live your life like at the same time you kind of gotta like right like you just keep moving forward and do what you can you know yeah mm, a lot of people just uh, but by the way a lot of people still go into the shelter because they're oh, yeah? really afraid yeah but uh, me personally, I, I, I don't care because uh, for now, my lifestyle is uh, I'm living today. And uh, if the missile will reach me, though, so this is uh, my fortune, you know? Yeah, yeah, 100%. I don't, you, I don't want you to... Actually, yeah, no, you, you filmed a video somewhere. part during yeah. this whole thing, right? I did already three, one, three video parts during the... During the full scale invasion, but uh, and uh, the, there is always uh, uh, the different feelings when you trying to do a trick uh, for filming a trick for already one hour or half an hour, a lot of tries. You concentrate a lot, and the missile alert signal starting, and it like uh, in the in the street, it like Ooh, and you yeah. hear it everywhere, and you. And uh, it is a dangerous signal that missile yeah, could. You're trying to the, focus, the and you're like, and yeah, yeah and you you can't focus. But uh, sometimes, you know, this feeling uh, you, you can't uh, you can't know this feeling. But uh, I I'm telling you, sometimes this feeling uh, that uh, missile alert starts, and you like, oh, I need to get trick. I need to get trick before <laughs> before maybe maybe yeah, this yeah. last chance. Yeah. I, I've had that feeling, but on like a way smaller scale, you know, not like like that, you know. 
Yeah. That's wild. So were you even allowed to film like in the streets at that time or, or oh, is that fine? Or, this is a uh, good question. Uh, Cause uh, at the beginning uh, of the war, like you know, we, we, we didn't skate. We just uh, was sitting at home and checking the news. And uh, after uh, a month or something like that, from the beginning of full scale invasion, we started to go out a little bit. Um, but not far from home, and uh, for the pla for the places uh, where no pe no people, maybe some some flat ground, and and that's it. Some some skate park, maybe a small one, but with no buildings around to not not too scary people with the sound, and uh, and uh, we starting to skate more and more. Uh, uh, the situation in Kiev uh, became uh, better, uh, and uh, I think in in two months uh, we started. I, I was be able. Uh, I was able uh, to go first time in the street skating. Okay. And I was really surprised that uh, the people was uh, okay. They was not like, oh. Don't do this. Yeah, what are you Don't doing? Make some yeah. noise. Yeah, they were yeah. going on. No, everyone was okay. Even the ordinary people in the street, they were like, "Oh, you you doing good? Okay, just keep doing. Uh, wow. It's better than just I don't know drink alcohol on the on the bench and the... right. You're doing something positive and yeah, yeah. And trying to clear your mind. Yeah, yeah. And I was really surprised that everyone understood us. It, uh, it is like meditation for us, you know, because for me, the first uh, months of the war, that was really the best scene I ever imagined. The going to just to skate uh, at least for half an hour, that was uh, really the best time for my mind to reset, to just concentrate on skateboarding and uh, to close every bad news, every bad feelings. And uh, after the, every skate session, I was like, I was, uh, I, it was the best feeling. I was really in good mood, everything okay, nothing uh, wrong to my mind. And uh, it helps me a lot back in the days. Yeah. And uh, after, after the three months uh, of the beginning of the full invasion, uh, I'm starting to go filming. I, I was I was uh, motivated to film some part, and mm -hmm. uh, I did it. Uh, I did it almost uh, that way I wanted, cause uh, I filmed uh, for three months or two, okay. and then I broke my cervical, this bone, mm. and I stopped. And I stopped skating. Uh, That's uh, one of the uh, worst and, things to break, yeah, right there. Yeah. I know, I know. You just, you just like this. You just uh, with this. Uh, yeah, your arms in the sling. You can't move. You yeah, can yeah. move any 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 yeah. part of your left uh, of my left uh, side of the body. I was just laying in the bed all the months in August, bro. That was uh, the best scene I ever. I ever yeah, that, that sucks. Ever you're, you're dealing with me. this. You're dealing with this whole thing, and now you can't go use your one outlet skateboarding to clear your mind and kind of get out. And this you know, is last. And this like... is last month of the summer. You know, this is August. And oh, uh, really? This is the best time. The best time to skating. And uh, the weather is so warm, but you are with, with this fix, and yeah. you swearing a lot. You like smelling bad because you can't. Uh, put it away and go to the shower for the one month. I was not be able to go to the shower because I yeah. couldn't move. I it is it it was not allowed. But you know, uh, I I finished editing uh, the part uh, the my part uh, with uh, every 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 clip I had, and uh, yeah. and it turned out good. And uh, Solo Skate magazine uh, made the interview with me and put it on there website and i was like yeah that's that's a good that's a yeah. good uh, beginning because oh. this is was uh, my first appear uh on the european uh, website yeah 
And for me, even, that was a hold on, motivation. Even bigger than that, it, it's like you're almost setting the precedent for all the people in Ukraine. Like this guy's out skating and filming parts. Like, you know what I mean? I think it's not just that, you know, you filmed the cool part which is impressive in itself. But like, I think it kind of was showing that you were doing stuff like people were out and, you know? Yeah. I, I think uh, that, that was really important. Uh, Cause uh, at that time uh, there was some uh, ways, uh, some illegal ways uh, to, to leave the country. It was not so, uh, it was not so expensive uh, to buy documents and leave country. And mm-hmm. a lot of good skaters uh, at the time when, when this part was filming and uh, uh, it's going out uh, and uh, a lot of good skaters just bought, bought these documents, Ukrainians, and left yeah. country. And they can't uh, go back and they don't want to go back, you know. But uh, me, I didn't want to do this. Uh, yeah, I can't uh, go abroad because uh, there is a law that uh, in the war time. Uh, all the men uh, from 80 year old, 18 year old uh, mm-hmm. to 60 year old can't leave the country because uh, in the if the situation would be worst, uh, we should go to the army and defend our country, our independence. So I decided not to do this, just uh, keep skating, keep uh, yeah. filming, and uh, through my. Uh, mm, skate career skate experience uh show the world that we can do tricks we are not like the short uh, the short country you know uh yeah. the third level country we we can skate we have culture uh we have taste we can edit video parts we can still do this and we prove we can build yeah. a skate park in the war time bro i think not uh not so many people can do this no man it takes a lot of strength to do everything you guys did and with everything going on like i was blown away when i showed up and you guys were just ripping the park you know and like you skate better than some some people some of the every like a lot of people i've ever met you know so i was just like damn they got a strong scene here like people are you know people are skating but uh uh, when you came to Odessa like one year ago, that was uh, uh, the the time was better, you know. Uh, for now, it's it's worse. Uh, back in the days, uh, at that period, uh, I was attending Odessa four times because uh, I love this city and uh, I can go there and back. And yeah. now I I don't want to leave uh, Kiev because it is yeah. a little bit dangerous. I mean, like, uh, I don't want to play with a fortune uh, in in the way uh, you can just go to the, buy tickets, go to the train and uh, on the halfway to your destination, you could, uh, rec- you could be recruited by army to army. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to be, to attend yeah. army for now, so... Uh, I feel sure. uh, going uh, to some trips and I'm staying in Kiev already more than one year, just not, not leaving the city. It is really dangerous uh, for men uh, um, at the age like me. Yeah. Do you have uh, friends that skate, that serve also? or That is, uh, that is uh, in the army? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And uh, we all the time, uh, they need something, uh, some equipment or some uh, clothing or some food and everything. Uh, we gathering money for them. We doing some posts uh, to for donations. Uh, we gather a lot of money. We donate uh, by ourselves to, to help them to survive. Uh, if they need something, uh, all the times uh, they need some car, uh, to buy some car for the mission. Uh, for the for some fight mission with uh, the enemies or some they need uh, to buy some drone to to look for the enemies so we gathering money for this and buying and sending to them and helping as we can that's incredible so do you um do you guys run into any russian skaters like at all like are they ever around like you know what i mean cuz i'm sure people live all over and you know what i mean I can tell you the story, okay? <laughs> mm-hmm. 
two years uh, before this big uh, invasion of Russian army, there was a big, uh, that was uh, 2019. And uh, there was a big uh, skate contest, one of the first big one uh, in Ukraine. And uh, they uh, double, triple, it calls. And uh, they, uh, the, the people uh, who do it, uh, who did it, uh, they uh, invi- invited a lot of uh, skaters from Europe just to, just to compete, compete with, with each other, with us, with Ukrainians. Uh, and uh, they invited some Russians, and we had uh, back in the days we had uh, good connections with uh, Russian skaters. They came to us uh, every year almost, and uh, we were hosting them like like our brothers. And then the war started, and uh, no one, almost no one from them, told uh, something good to us. No one, uh, uh, no one can tell uh, some anything against against their government. Uh, mm. They're just uh, silent. Right. That's crazy, cause uh, we were we were hosting them like brothers, but when uh, something bad uh, happens, yeah. they're just quiet. They're just afraid to even say something against yeah. their government and community, cause they are. They are so weak and afraid. That's crazy. Only, only I don't know, only few people uh, wrote me some good words like, uh, "Bro, we are against the war and everything. Sorry for that." But it is it is nothing. You saying yeah. sorry, okay, but you, you have uh, your Instagram. Uh, you have uh, your audience. Uh, I mean, like uh, this is. Uh, I I knew uh, all. I knew a lot of good skaters, uh, in professional ones uh, from Russia that had uh, thirty thousand uh, followers, and they yeah. and they didn't tell any word about their their position about the war uh, to their audience. They yeah. they said nothing. No one word. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you got to think it's probably pretty frightening to think like you're going to share this to 30,000 people and like they're going to they could come straight to you. You know what I mean? So like, yeah, I, know, under, but, I, I kind of understand they're probably scared. Like it doesn't make it like, you know, you know, but this, probably, is, this is you know. The, the bad side of this because uh, if they silent, so they uh, uh, they think uh, it it makes them uh, be not against but uh, with it and uh, so i know what you mean it's it's a crazy story cuz uh, the the one big country uh, go fighting go to to another one and it is uh, it is normal and the people uh, in russia are living the same life they they are not thinking that uh, the their government or their people doing something wrong. Because mm. their news, you know, I, I was in Russia back in the days uh, when I was a kid uh, with my mom and everything. And uh, people from Russia don't even back in the days before the war and everything, they don't uh, think any anything good about Ukrainian people back in the day 10 years ago and now they still uh, hate us for now they really? hate us for now they want to kill us and even the they, civilians you're talking about even even the civilians because uh, I, I i mean uh, i know what i'm saying because uh, their government uh, rule all the uh, news on television all the internet news and everything, and they uh, uh, paint in these pictures that we are terrorists, and uh, all the uh, all the Russian nation should uh, fight against us. But in the real world, it's uh, upside down, you know, because mm. we are just fighting for our freedom, for our land that historically ours. 
and yeah. uh, but their uh, society uh, looked uh, a lot of this uh, fake news every day on TV, and they started thinking that uh, white is black and black is white. Like, yeah, it's really tough. Like with the internet because you got the regular news which is already like you don't know if you're getting the truth or not but then you got the internet everyone just gives their opinions so some people uh, think this, I mean, is uh, this, this is that so it gets really confusing and that's why personally i wanted to go myself just to kind of feel see what it's actually like like there and experience it and not hear it from other people you know so but uh in in the free world of uh, the free speaking and everything, uh, you can find the true news. But in Russia, I think no, because uh, I heard a lot of, uh, uh, I chat with some people and I see that they even didn't uh, uh, saw any true information from all this time, because I think uh, the internet a little bit blocked. From the mm. from the information uh, that is uh, not uh, okay for their government. Yeah, it's possible. So yeah. I think that they just don't understand what's happening in in mm. overall in general. So it is really pity. Yeah, you can't uh, yeah, it, you can't you... Uh, tell any any truth to the person that is uh, was uh, given a lot of taking out of fake information for like past three year f- past three or four years it, yeah. it, does it, it feel yeah does it feel like there's an end in sight like because when i was there it felt like it was kind of coming down a little no. bit you know like what, what no, does it no 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 it doesn't no. feel like that at all it's it's like uh well, you said it, it came up ten years. since then but it's like for ni- next five years uh, the war will be really going, going, yeah because well, uh, it's it's about the numbers, you know. Uh, let's let's see. Uh, in Ukraine, uh, eight million people left the country from the beginning of the war. So in Ukraine, it's kind of thirty-five uh, millions. In Russia, it's one hundred and fifty million people. And it if 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 you you can compare, it's like four times less Ukrainian yeah. people who can defend from million uh, people army from russia so uh, even uh, with a new uh, foreign equipment rush of uh, foreign uh, uh, tanks technic uh, machines uh, uh, and everything we don't have uh, enough people to defend uh, our land because uh, the enemy is uh, like five times bigger than we are yeah so the end uh it's i don't know i can't for now i can't uh, yeah you can't know yeah right i was just asking if you had like a feel like, like a you know no a hunch no. like how no, it felt no at, no at all <clears throat> well i mean all that stuff like you know you'll always i feel like you'll never get to an end or a right or wrong about what should be done or what people are doing i think personally though what you're doing is the best you could do it's like and that's what people should focus on is or in my opinion just like your world do the best you can you're like helping get a skate park being good to the community and people around you and that's like yeah that's all you could do and focus on each day just be the best version of me yeah exactly and you can't be you know you can't control all these things going on around you so I mean, I just give you guys, all you guys props and you for, you know, helping the community and everything and Thank coming you. on. Um, is there a way people could help out? Do you have like a link or a website, like something mm. for the skate park or anything like uh, that? You know, uh, this is uh, the easiest way to help. In any case, uh, you can help uh, in skateboarding, uh, uh, in skateboarding way or just mm-hmm. uh, for the people or just for army. Uh, the easiest way you can just uh, uh, send me a direct message in Instagram uh, and uh, in for any questions uh, I can help you to to organize any help 
to send you all the links uh, and uh, to uh, show you uh, the situation and uh, to lead you uh, to the right uh, people if I can't uh, uh, help uh, in any question. So okay, feel cool. free, just uh, I hope you will put my Instagram and uh, yeah, any course. person who sees this, uh, just can DM me anytime I will answer and uh, we will uh, try to do our best. Dude, that's awesome. Yeah, I'll, th I'll throw your Instagram link in the description and all that stuff. And I appreciate you coming on, sharing your story. And, you know, thanks for having me, bro. Chatting up, man. All right, I'll talk to you soon. Yeah. Be good. See ya. Right.